Three, two, one. John, are we live? We're live, sir. How are you, buddy? I am great. How are you today? Good and sore. Yeah. <laughs> Barely moving around. So let's get into that. Tell, well, us, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, awesome situation from this past weekend. Well, it was. Uh, it sucked and it was awesome. It uh, was in t- for everybody who was watching last week and for you guys who are in <laughs> studio. I don't get spooked out by too much. I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie, but I was deathly afraid of the swim. So the swim on the triathlon goes from Alcatraz to shore. And I went there three days before and two days prior to that, I hired a, um, a swim coach or group to help me out. And two days prior, he took me in the water and he was a guy who was like a coast guard out there and he was, right. like, swims that distance 500 times without a wetsuit. He was like just kind of a wild man wow. around like a little dinghy. Yeah. And we get to the Golden Gate Bridge, and Alcatraz is like a couple miles away. He goes, okay, you're going to jump out now, and you're going to swim to Alcatraz. And I thought he's fucking with me. Yeah. It was right. like, he's, he's kidding around. Right. He's like, no, jump out here. He's like, start swimming. And I'm like, when do you pick me back up? He goes, at Alcatraz. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He's like, the current's going with you, dude. He's like, you're going to be fine. I do this oh, without yeah. a wetsuit. I'm just like, okay. So wow. I jumped in. And that literally took 50% of the fear away because I was like, oh, okay, I can stay in the water for that long. All right. And then the next day, we went in and we tried to swim bits and pieces of the course. Okay. And the current was so bad that I felt like I was going to die about 10 minutes in. And it took all my confidence away again. Oh, shit. So then the third day, we did the triathlon. And uh, the start was hectic. It was 2,000 people off in like six minutes. So people were getting kicked and screaming and... They were quitting so really fast. Were you jumping off the rocks or was it a barge? Or what no. So, yeah. So they take a boat out and they park it like right next to Alcatraz. Okay. So like you're right up near it. Yeah. And then you jump off it and you got to start swimming. So it's yeah. literally, I felt so bad because you come around the corner and there's a woman shouting at you. Like <laughs> if you don't jump, you're going to get pushed in. So I, Lawrence, who's yeah. going to be my shout out in a second, who yeah. went with me, he just kind of like held his nose and just jumped. And you come around the corner, and it's like two people before you, and then you have to jump in. And the poor lady next to me was just like stuck. Right. And the lady's just shouting at her, jump or you get pushed. And I look at her, and she's just like frozen. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. shit, I don't, want, I don't want this lady to push me. So I jumped in and started <laughs> swimming. Right, right. Um, and it, was, it took a little adjusting too, but I just kept thinking, just keep swimming. And I swam a stupid route. So I also. went, the current's violent. So you're supposed to sight. You're supposed to look at different yeah. buildings. right, right. I thought I was sighting, but I must have been goofing it up yeah. because I swam 4,000 yards instead of 2,700. So I swam literally 2.2 miles. Holy crap. Yeah, it sucked. And I got out. I was not the last person out, and I didn't quit. So I was, I was towards the end of everything, right. each leg, yeah. but I wasn't the last, so I was happy. You know what? We talked about that uh, last week. The simple fact that you did it and you finished yeah. way more than, than me. I. I think what you did is fantastic. I was spooked out, and uh, to be honest, my best part is my running. I'm usually a pretty good runner, and it was the worst because my legs were just giving out. My calf cramped up in the swim, and then during the bike, and then um, during the run, my calf was cramping, so I think I was kind of limp running. Mm -hmm. And then my quad rolled up. It like spasmed like four times. I fell. I was going to quit, and then I just kept going. And my shout-outs to Lawrence, who obviously um, motivated me to do this, and he's constantly always being like a great – quasi big brother to me mm-hmm. the last half mile and he finished it way faster than I did because he's a rock star he <laughs> ran back and then he ran the last half mile with me so he ran back to about where he could see me come around the corner and yeah. then ran the last half mile so that, shout out to him for being awesome. uh, a motivational mm-hmm. guy a good big brother and then uh, motivating me to actually do this yeah, he, uh, him and I were sitting on that boat getting ready to jump off and he looked at me and goes I think I'm pretty nervous too. And I'm like, if he's nervous, it's okay for me to be nervous. He was, he's, and Lawrence has climbed basically every mountain but Everest, was a pro fighter, won the Golden Gloves. Yeah. He's done a bunch of, tra- he did a triathlon the week before in Hawaii. No and shit, he looks at right? me and goes, I'm, I'm pretty nervous too. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. So I feel better. Did, did he practice with you in the bay at no, all? No, he didn't even practice. Shit. And he, he breaststrokes. He doesn't even do the freestyle like everybody else. Right. He just gets in and he just like doggy paddles the whole way. Huh. It's just weird, but How's it his works. speed? Fast, he did in forty minutes. I don't. I don't I mean, know. How he it does sounds it. great. I don't he just know. Just like if that's... pops his head up and down out of the water and just keeps going. Fuck. Uh, yeah, he's nice. He's Very crazy. Good. Yeah. So All it was right. fun. Um, I don't love San Francisco. That was my conclusion on mm-hmm. that city. 
But right. uh, Napa Valley was cool. And mm-hmm. uh, also shout out to Sean who came out with me and supported too. Yeah, it looked like you guys had fun. Yeah, we had some fun afterwards. Very good. Cool. Where's my wine? <laughs> uh, actually, I have a bunch of cases coming. I'm not oh. even a big wine guy, but they sell you on it. So you're at Napa and they're like, well, we just sure. gave you this tasting. Do you want to buy some? And When in Rome fuck. or when in Napa. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I didn't even realize like one of the cases I bought was yeah. just port wine, Ooh. which is like sweet wine, really, yeah. really sweet wine. After dinner stuff. Dessert. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have tons fun of with dessert that. wine. Yep. So I have like literally a case of dessert wine coming, which I'm probably never going to use. <laughs> so you can have it all. No, no. <laughs> you um, can keep that. Thank you. Any shout outs for you? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, two. Well, three, I guess. Uh, one and two would be you and Lawrence for doing what you did. <clears throat> I thought it took uh, immense balls. And you raise money for autism, which is a great charity. You raised a ton of money. I if, I, if I can say, that was the coolest part is uh, thank you to everybody that donated because Lawrence and I out raised everybody times yep. two. So even nice. the second place person, we doubled Perfect. their donation. So That's, that was the coolest part was that the autism charity got twice the uh, yeah. donations. So that has to be awesome. shouted out. And uh, I really do. I just I respect it. And um, what you guys did, I think, was fantastic. I know that you were a little bit nervous and uh, maybe a little bit more than a little bit, but yeah. you did what it, you did what you had to do and you trained hard and you succeeded. And it's awesome. Thanks buddy. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, second shout out is uh, sort of off topic. Uh, comedian used to have his own show called, his name is uh, John Stewart. Yeah. He sat in front of Congress yesterday to advocate for the first responders who are still with us, uh, who ran in to the buildings on 9-11. He advocated because every five years, for whatever stupid flipping reason, uh, Congress has to decide if they want to continue to- uh, Fund their health. Fund their health, yeah, benefits. And so he got up and really called them out and didn't use foul language, but said, you know what? These people, every five years have to worry about whether or not they're gonna be able to afford their medical shit. Uh, and you assholes, all y'all, no matter what side of the aisle, get on the same page and just fund it for the rest of their lives because it's ridiculous. So I shout out to him for, he did some press afterwards uh, and I just, I shout out to him for doing what he did for those people who deserve the <coughs> ultimate shout out. I watched uh, his video on the plane ride home actually yesterday and mm-hmm. yeah, it's a really powerful video. It, Very uh, well spoken. Guy. Yeah, oh him. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, you know. He's good at what he does. He's very good at what he does, yeah. And he's very articulate and he brings, he brings some steam. Yeah, so, he, was, he was in yeah. tears. He was, yeah. he was passionate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, those cool. are my shout outs. It's all good um, uh, efforts and such, so. That's all I got. Um, well, I'm excited about the show today because uh, first we have, and I'm going to introduce them first, the Love Twins on, and then mm-hmm. we have Brian on, who's the COO of Navy Pier, which Boom. I love because I lived yep. two blocks from it for 11 years. But I'm going to start with the Love Twins, Jan and Jillian Juhas. I didn't butcher that, right? Yep. Okay. They own Entwined <laughs> Lifestyle. Uh, they're love and lifestyle coaches, and they work primarily with women, but we'll touch on that in a second, to design a love life that the women deserve. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having us. Um, you're both twins. One of you is three minutes older than the other. It's Which one was older? <coughs> I am. Jillian. Jillian's Sorry. older. Okay. Um, tell me about Entwined and um, how you guys came up with the idea of the Love Twins and what you guys do. Whichever one of you wants to go, or both of you at the same, same time. time. <laughs> Let's go. Jillian? Jillian. So... Entwined Lifestyle came about because uh, she and I actually got our master's in marriage and family therapy, um, but we decided we didn't want to practice therapy because we couldn't actually implement a lot of tools or techniques with our clients to get uh, the solutions and goals they wanted to achieve. So we found coaching to be a better fit for us. And when it comes to someone's lifestyle, it's all about uh, the three main tasks of life, love, work, and social. So that sort of is entwined someone's overall life. And Entwine has the word twin in it, which is a representation of the two of us. Perfect. Nice. So did you guys both have a passion for lifestyle and life coaching from a young age? Is that something you guys both wanted to do? Actually, no. I think how how we got started in the whole psychology route. So we 
Um, we both got our undergrad in psychology but with no real intentions. Um, and then we took a few years off. During that time frame, we actually volunteered at the, um, I don't know what it's called now. National Runaway oh, Switchboard. Switch board. I don't know if it's the same name now, but um, it's where children run away from home and we would have to mediate between the child and the parents um, what was going to be the child's more or less like punishment or the structure they were going to have to come back home to for running away from home and try to work with the parents in terms of understanding the child. So that we did that for three years and that kind of fueled our drive to go to grad school in terms of marriage and family Very therapy. cool. Did you guys go to grad school together? <laughs> yes. yes. You did. Where did you go? Adler School of Professional Psychology. Okay, so in Chicago. And you guys are from a very small town, you said, down south. Yes. <laughs> and what brought you to Chicago? School? School. Very cool. So um, primarily women. So if a woman wants to come to you guys and says, hey, listen, I'm having trouble dating. It's a tough, uh, it's a tough environment to find a boyfriend out there or um, a significant other. What's kind of step one for you guys? So we'll do a discovery call with her and learn about her dating experience, well, any relationships she's either experienced in the past, also understand a little bit about where she's struggling and help provide some insight so she can see where she has potential to actually grow and actually achieve her goals. And then if she feels like it's a great fit, then we uh, move on to actually coaching and we do four calls per month. And then also we'll do different exercises each week and also unlimited tech support. So that way we're holding them through the entire process and they never feel like they're alone. So you guys probably get a lot of text messages from nervous <laughs> girls when they're getting ready to go on dates. Yes, we get a lot of screenshots. Yes, but it too. helps hold them accountable and it actually gets them to their goal. So sure. it actually eases their mind and so they no longer have to feel the way they feel in that moment. Well, it's great because they can feel open with you guys, obviously, mm -hmm. on a level that they might not feel open to speak to a girlfriend um, who might judge them in a certain way or might be gossipy with their friends. But at least they get the advice and from somebody who is obviously very knowledgeable, experienced, and a professional, but also is not going to judge them. A hundred percent. Do you find that, uh, and we were talking off air a little bit about this, and this is almost the softball for you guys but uh, do you find that with dating apps and social media now that it's becoming even more difficult to date I think it is becoming more difficult for people to date now mm -hmm. with social media and all the dating apps because people are not valuing what it is to have a commitment or build a deeper um, long-lasting connection with someone because they think oh immediately if they don't like maybe some sort of characteristic about this person they're dating they're just like oh there's a million other options I can just you know discard this person like they're ghost them like they don't even exist so I do think it's definitely made it much more difficult in terms of the dating process but there's still lots of people who do want you know that long life commitment with somebody sure I mean I so I was in a long-term relationship, about a six and a half year relationship. And when I started that, there was no dating apps. I got out of that. And then it took me, I don't know, six months or so before I got on dating apps. And it seemed easy because you get to like get at least some idea of what the person is about and message a little bit before you waste your time going on a date. Right. And I say waste time because I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> but... Um, it, I can see it now. It's like I have a ton of friends on um, dating apps. And one of my closest friends, I won't name him because he watches the show. He'll, <laughs> he'll absolutely kill me if I say his name. But I, I feel like the apps have ruined dating for him completely because he is a really nice guy who I know would make a great dad and wants kids. But the dating apps are so easy for him that he is just he just goes on them and he cannot get into a meaningful relationship. And he's probably going to text me in a second because I think he's watching right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go F myself. But I feel like it's really just made it so that he can be a serial dater instead of really trying to find but a But that's the choice he's making to be a serial dater? Yeah, yeah, I but think it that's, is. But then that's a choice he's making for his lifestyle, and that may be where he's at right now mentally. If he does want to be he's gonna love a husband or a father, <laughs> then he has to put that value and that choice towards all the actions he's taking towards that goal. And we can only receive a commitment when we're actually committed to our own purpose and goal. So, it, and you just kind of touched on something. It's, um, I always say, if you're not a happy person or you're not comfortable with who you are in this moment, that nobody else is ever going to necessarily make you happy. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that social media too, um, I don't know, everybody wants to be a certain way on social media, so I think it creates less confidence in people and it makes people a little less happy about themselves, which ultimately makes dating a little bit more difficult too. 
do you find that you guys have to work a lot on confidence with people? Yes, we work on individuals' mindset and helping them work on their internal uh, perspective and viewpoints on how they perceive things because a lot of times people wrap emotion around certain aspects or situations because it triggers something from their past. So a lot of times it's working through some of these like repeated patterns that they may be experiencing and that could be the reason why they're not where they're at today in finding love um, with a significant other. So it all goes back to like their internal worth is a lot of times what we focus on which helps work on their confidence boost. Well, we help them see their value, not as opposed to comparing themselves to everyone in social media or on apps. We help them see their value in terms of what they have to offer or bring to the table. Awesome. And Jan, so if um, if somebody comes to you and they say, hey, listen, I, I need to find a date. Um, I'm having difficulty do, doing that. And you guys work through... Um, some of the things that you guys are gonna work through. Do you have any suggestions of where somebody should go to find dates? Do you have any suggestions of like, hey, just wait until the right person comes around? What's kind of the step of then finding somebody to date? Well, I think they have to be proactive in the process. Um, We do recommend all of our clients have like sign up for the dating apps and we definitely look through their dating like profiles and make sure they're representing themselves in the best light in order to attract the more committed relationship versus because if you have a profile that has lots of images of you partying on it or going out or swimsuit pictures pictures, yeah you're not going to be attracting the right energy into your life for a more serious stable committed relationship so we definitely help them in terms of how they're visually representing themselves and then also the message in their bio that they're relaying out there Uh, I definitely re-recommend to our clients as well, uh, given we do primarily work with women, I'll say, you know, well, what are like sporting events going on right now? You need to put yourself in environments where there's going to be lots of men because you definitely want to, you know, interact with them and hopefully you can meet someone in person as well. So we don't really have our clients limit to any certain situations. Yeah, just putting yourself out there more so than maybe Mm -hmm. they had been in the past. Right. Um, and Jillian, I'll let you kind of touch on some of the things that, and I'm going to switch between you guys so John can figure the camera situation out. Um, but, um, and either one of you jump in and answer the questions if you want, but I'll probably direct them to one or the other. Um, you guys have online courses as well. What kind of online courses can somebody have if they're not going to come and meet with you guys in person? So we have two online courses, Own Who the Fuck You Are, which is our confidence program. I love that. And then we also have our Boundary Badass program, which can actually be used at work, in work relationships, love relationships, or even with friendships. It's teaching you how to set boundaries to get your needs met so you no longer feel disrespected in a situation. And it's all about using your value system to really implement and communicate in a way that's calm, constructive, and a concise message so your message is actually heard and the other person works with you by asking for what it is that you need versus telling them. So you guys, and and I think it's great that you do both because I think the life coaching aspect of what you're touching on now, uh, when you are more confident in what you do in your life and and you're happier with what you do in your life, you're probably going to translate to a happier dating Mm -hmm. um life as well um do you guys find that with some people it's just a lot of life coaching just kind of getting them happy with who they are so that they can then be happy for somebody else and how does that work so does somebody just come meet you guys and you guys are like okay this person kind of falls more into the life coach bubble we find out what their goals are and what it is that they want to work on and so most of the time people are coming to us to base you know for their love relationships however there's usually a lot of other facets in their life that aren't working out that are actually affecting as the reason why their relationships aren't working so it just we'll focus on their goals but then sometimes we might make other suggestions or give advice on other ways that they might want to make changes that all you know entwine correlates with each facet of like reaching that goal okay cool um Jan, what are, and this could be a very loaded question, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what are, what do you think are some real must-haves for two people to have a connection? Like you say, like I always think to myself, like positivity versus negativity, I think for me in my past was a big thing. Like I'm naturally a cup half full person. If I have somebody who's constantly always cup half empty, that for me will just never work. Um, obviously communication, but is there anything that if two people just don't have like that sort of connection, it's just not going to work? 
Well, like we said before, we teach all of our clients to operate from their value system. So usually we have our clients um, develop five values to operate from, which might be, for example, loyalty, open communication. um, Integrity. Yeah, integrity. So you want to have five that you operate from, and those three, at least three of them, you want to be able to match with the other person that you're dating in order to ensure you guys are on the same page and finding alignment in terms of how you're going to live your lives together. So in terms of, like you said, positivity or negativity, obviously it's going to be hard for anybody, I think, in general to date someone who has a negative mindset because that can wear on anybody who has a positive mindset. Um, so those are just things, different avenues. I think you'll have to dive into each situation, but you can help have clarity if you operate from your relationship values in terms of choosing somebody during the dating process. That's going to be a long-term match for you. Do you find um, that, and I say this to friends of mine all the time and I kind of model my own dating after this obviously people have to date somebody for a a fairly decent amount of time to figure these things out you know people rush into relationships relatively fast all the time Mm -hmm. I just always feel like the first three to six months everything is fine like for the most part most people are getting along Um, you don't have any conflict do you find that it really takes people going through some stuff to be able to figure out if that's going to be something that's going to work for a long long period of time in the first like three months four months you should be able to determine if someone is able to meet you on your value system or not because you're gonna as long as you're dating them on a continuous basis like and going on like date night at least once a week and you're spending you know quality time together you should be able to figure out if somebody values the same things that you do within that time period um, usually we recommend somebody date somebody for you know a good three months 90 days before you ask for a commitment from okay. that person just so you aren't jumping the gun and getting into a relationship with somebody and then realizing down the road oh this person is not going to work out for me right and then having to unravel that because then there's a mm-hmm. title and people are like well now you have a title and that's tough to unravel too Right. And if you guys do have values that do align, then when you do hit speed bumps down the road, like six months in or nine months in, those value systems are going to help you work through it much easier. I I think, and I'm going to say this, and honestly, probably maybe a handful of people I know actually know that I had done this in my past relationship. John, I think, knows, but I think most people don't. I went to uh, a relationship, like a couples counselor Uh when things were getting bad. And I learned, now everybody knows, so I'm <laughs> now, now, now everybody literally knows. Hey, there's nothing wrong show. with No, and I, this is it's because it. I'm not ashamed of it. I just, I'm, I'm yeah, a pretty private person. Yeah, you shouldn't be. I think it takes strength to face things. So. But for me, it taught a lot to me about how to conflict resolve because two people look at conflicts very differently. And mm-hmm. I think for me, it translated to the other parts of my life, my, my business relationships with business partners, working with employees and staff in a way where when things go wrong, people communicate about difficulties very, very differently. Yes. So I think for people listening, if you're having issues at all, it makes a lot of sense. Somebody doesn't have to not yet be in a relationship. They can be in a relationship and come to you guys for advice on love, correct? You, most people come to us when they're single. Okay. And we're helping them all the way from the beginning stages to up to until marriage. And sometimes I we actually have a few married couples and engaged couples, people that want that accountability, that they yeah. want to keep, you know, having someone that's on that support, self care on a you know weekly basis that actually helps them keep continuously having the growth mindset to continue growing that relationship. Yeah, and I think things as time goes on sometimes become. Um, uh, consistent and maybe even stale and people stop learning how to communicate with one another and I think that is probably the value that you guys give a lot of your continuous customers. Yeah, people sometimes get too comfortable especially in long-term relationships or even marriage and so one of the best ways we say is have date night once a week to keep the relationship thriving and healthy and you're actually making time and putting that relationship first because a lot of times when people end up having kids the relationship can fall to the wayside but that's the first foundation of how the family's been built and if you don't keep nurturing it the rest of the family is going to start to suffer um great advice what's the fiercely femme tribe which one of you wants to answer it so our fiercely femme tribe yeah. is a new video program that we are launching so um there's actually a facebook group for it as well it's private for women only shoot and we during can't sneak on john <laughs> <laughs> in this group is allows women to talk about like their dating struggles and what they're currently facing out in the dating world and then our weekly video they'll get a weekly video that could be anything associated with life 
um, mindset in terms of dating, how to present themselves. Uh, and then they also get mindset exercises that go along with each weekly video. That's great. And they can find, what's your website? So, Entwinedlifestyle.com. Okay, so they can go on there and definitely find more information about yes, it. Yes, yes, they can. Very cool. And if somebody was to try to reach out to you guys, best way to do it is through the website, through social media? Either Which way. One, either way. Yeah, you can send us a DM on Instagram or you can you know, go to our website, whatever works for you. Awesome. And DMing girls randomly on Instagram <laughs> is not the way to hit them up, right? For guys? Actually, you can. If you you're, can. Yeah, if you approach it in the right way. In, yeah. in, a, in a smart way. Yes. 100%. Okay. There you go, guys, watching. <laughs> now all my guy friends are going to go start DMing every girl on Instagram. In the right way. In the right way. <laughs> Please explain yeah. what the right way is because so, some people are going to think. Yeah, what is the yeah. right way? I mean, I guess <laughs> it depends. I'm going to say this, but I think it depends because I've DMed a girl or two. I think it no. depends on. I think it really depends on like who the person is and what you're DMing for. I mean, if you're DMing. Remember. Absolutely. A story and you're actually responding to it, that's one thing. If you're being an idiot and saying st something stupid about a photo, totally yeah. different. Why don't we ask the ladies? Yeah, we should ask them. They're the experts, <laughs> not me. Yeah, if you're going to DM a girl, you should definitely come from a respectful manner. Approach it more in a friendship way. And yes, like you said, responding to something she has on her story. So you're just building a slow connection with her. Um, and I think that's like the best way to go. Jesus, everybody I, I DM'd in a story who's watching now too is going to message me back and say something terrible <laughs> i'm outing myself bad in this one today um why why only women so what's what's uh why did you guys pick to only work with women and not guys so in the love world most coaches either you market towards men or women and that's just sort of how the industry itself works now we do work with men referral based only and have had a lot of success with men too so um but when it comes to marketing it's usually to choose one sex because you're dealing with different types of how things are being said or approached like she said this or he said that so it's just much easier to choose one sex um because unfortunately that's just how the industry works itself but sure yeah and then on the business side of things how is it uh being twin sisters owning a business together uh, we usually always have the same goal and vision in terms of how the business functions but obviously we're sisters and we have our moments of disagreements we got boundaries. You got boundaries. <laughs> mm -hmm. You guys take the same things you're coaching to your uh, to your clients, and then absolutely, yeah, we practice Before. everything that we talk about. I mean, obviously, we have our sister moments that would probably, but in terms of relationships in our lives, we apply everything that we teach our clients. For Does sure. the I'm the older sister ever work? No, <laughs> no, no we don't works. feel like I don't feel younger, and she probably doesn't feel older. No, no, not at all. Who is the favorite child? Neither. Neither. Our oh, mother. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm what asking. I'm seeing what's happening here. Neither. Our Neither? mother Aww. treated us all equally. That's perfect. <laughs> I was going to see if I could get some sibling rivalry going, and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I failed. There's, see, you can't great. Be, you can't come between yeah. twins. If we're I know, having look a, at that. We are having a disagreement, and then like someone like tries to like, come between us or something like that, or we immediately will stop our disagreement and bond with each other, and you cannot come between us. That's <laughs> awesome. Good for you guys. I, I, I love my little sister. I've seen that twins, but I could not own it. She's actually watching too. I, I love you, Sheena. But um, I don't think I could do a business with her. I think we would just rip each other's heads off. Huh. So kudos to you guys for being able to have a successful business and especially one that obviously is on a very social front. You guys probably have to put yourselves out there all the time. Yes, all the time. Um, only Chicago-based clients, or do you guys work with people all over the states? No, so we're actually online service-based, so we work okay. with people all over, some out of the country as well. So it's just everything's via phone or video um, for our phone calls. Awesome, so, so everything's online mm -hmm. or via video. Do you find that dating is, now that you guys said that, very different from city to city? Do you find that there's nuances in different cities, or is it just the same core principles matter everywhere? I would say the core principles matter everywhere. I, I think different cities, you experience different types of people because of how people's lifestyles are based on that city itself. But overall, the general principles still exist across the board in terms of gender, male and female. First date options in Chicago, <clears throat> any, any recommendations, any awesome, fun first date activities? I think it all depends on the couple. I think activities are always 
a lot of people I think nowadays actually don't invest that much in a first date because people go on so many first dates. So a lot of people will think, oh, let's just grab a drink or grab coffee as a very casual first date before they invest more time into that like second date. Um, so I would say it's more of a second or third date where someone gets a little bit more creative in their dating approach. And it all depends on the person's personality. I think fun activities are always great in terms of bonding with somebody, such as going to go play like, you know, a, a sporting event or going to um, Navy Pier. Yep. Yeah, Navy Pier. I was about Pier. to bump and set our right. second <laughs> guest there. Good job, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you really learn about someone when you're interacting with each other versus just sitting and having a cocktail or a bite to eat. It's you really learn about someone's like personality, their character. Because like, if, especially if you're like, I don't know, pl- playing a game or something like that, you're gonna really learn if like if they lose or they don't, like how they're gonna handle it in yep. their reaction. Yeah, if they're a sore loser. Mm-hmm. What about karaoke? Can you take somebody on a karaoke date? That's yeah, good. you definitely can if that person's comfortable with it. That's true. You got to get them comfortable. I think you should them. definitely ask if they're comfortable with going on that type of date for a first date. Okay. And if they're up for it, then yeah, why not? Perfect. Well, I'm going to bump and set to our second guest and come back and do a round table. I tried. I try to say first dates should happen at Navy Pier. All of them. <laughs> all of them. All Every up. first date. <laughs> I've actually taken a couple first dates to Navy Pier because I lived so close to it. Our well, second they obviously guest. didn't work out, right? Yeah, they, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, they didn't. We should probably put together some type of first date scenario, and we'll, we'll figure out how. Or you guys tell me what needs to happen, and we'll figure out how yeah, to do that. Yeah, totally. So that's kind of sure. cool. There's a lot of boat rides at Navy Pier. There is. There so is. our second guest is Brian Murphy. He's the COO of Navy Pier, which for those of you who are watching and are not from Chicago, and if you're from Chicago and you know what Navy Pier is, you have some issues. <laughs> it's the number one tourist attraction in the state, I believe. In the Midwest. In the Midwest. Wow. Over 9 million people a year visit Navy Pier. Brian, thanks for coming on, first thanks. and foremost. Thanks for having me. Um, but you guys have every sort of attraction from restaurants to boat rides to uh, stores, theater. theater. Yep. Shakespeare Theater, um, AMC Theater for, you know, IMAX movies. Oh, that's right. The yeah. IMAX is there as well. They just redid that, in fact, put a lot of money into it. Um, great sound, great visual. Is, is And so we were talking off air. I moved <clears throat> to Streeterville in 06 and moved out in 2017. And I, in my opinion, it renovated itself quite dramatically, especially towards the end there. Um, you guys have a lot more renovations happening and a lot more things planned. What are some of the big plans coming soon for Navy Pier? So if you picture the pier, it, it feels like we've kind of dealt with the first half of the pier <clears throat> back to about where Riva is, yeah. right? Uh, we have a private investment um, developers putting in a hotel. So we got 220 key hotel. It'll be uh, part of the Hilton Curio collection. Um, I think that should be done by summer of next year. So wow. they started, yeah. you know, nine months ago, uh, steel's up, and they'll start really focusing now <clears throat> on some of, the, um, some of the walls, some of the structure itself. They also opened a rooftop venue, which could be a really nice uh, first date called Offshore. So it's the largest rooftop um, bar and club, uh, they say, in the nation. Wow. For sure in the city of Chicago. And just opened about two weeks ago. Oh, really? Nice. Already? It's open already? Yes. So that one opened cool. already. If you think about the back in the bear garden, yeah. mm-hmm. right above that, up, there's a rooftop up there about three stories up, um, all glass enclosed with some outdoor seating as well. Great spot for the fireworks on Wednesday and Saturday nights. Yep. And it's got to have some incredible views of the city, too. Tremendous views looking back. Because one of my favorite spots in the city, I used to walk my dog to it when I was in Streeterville, was Olive Park, which is right next right? to you guys. Yeah. Has some of the greatest skyline views of Chicago. So I imagine your rooftop bar is going to be incredible for views it's got great views back to the city where's the hotel going so all the way in the back no it's actually in between uh reva so it's about three quarters of the way back okay uh and the bear garden so in between reva and the bear garden um three three different towers of of hotel rooms with some retail and a new restaurant bar uh on the first two levels as well very cool um that's crazy it's going to be open by next summer yeah what's the biggest attraction right now at navy pier for us it's the centennial wheel you know everybody wants to kind of get that view from uh from 200 feet up in the air looking back at the city looking out at over the uh beautiful lake michigan uh our boats do really well uh we've got several different types of uh you know you can do dinner cruises you could just do a, a sea dog which is more of an exhilarating ride 
uh, some of which we, you'll get wet on. Others could be an architectural tour down the down the river, which I really, really like. My favorite I, tour in Chicago. I think it's one of the best tours in the city of Chicago, truly. Uh, they're also doing food tours now. So we've got a tenant, uh, Food Planet, comes in, and they'll do a food tour, talk about the different types of food on the pier that are all from Chicago. They also have other tours outside the pier, but we always want to talk about the one at the pier. Oh, I didn't know that <clears> one. <throat> the architecture tour is my absolute favorite tour in Chicago. Anytime yeah. I have somebody come in from out of town, that's the tour I take them on. Didn't know about the food tour. And we were talking off air. You said that um, Navy Pier itself has a lot of Chicago-based entrepreneurs that actually have space and businesses in Navy Pier. Yeah, we've got about, I'd say, 80 tenants on the pier. Um, and we really focused on this, on this last renovation on Chicago-based products, Chicago-based retailers. Um, in fact, one of, our <clears throat> one of our first store when you walk in is a store that was created by a uh, entrepreneur, and they called it Neighborhoods. And it's just a bunch of items from different neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. The next one over is called 77 Flavors because there's seven, 77 neighborhoods in the city of Chicago, and they do food items from different er areas of the city. So we're really trying to focus on, on Chicago-themed, um, I was talking earlier about Stephanie Hart, who's the <clears throat> owner of a bakery called Brown Sugar Bakery. Her actual bakery is over in Chatham on East 75th Street, and uh, we are able to get her to come to the pier. And the exposure that she's had at the pier, she said, has helped explode her business back in Chatham. So she's getting some recognition from either our marketing or just people seeing her store at the pier that is driving some business out to Chatham. And she said it's helping her business out there, and it's also helping some of her neighborhood entrepreneurs who are, who are on 75th Street as well, just from the ancillary uh, visits. That's great to hear. Your marketing <clears> department <throat> is watching. You have Bree from your marketing department. Hey, Bree. Says, shout hey, Bree. out to Bree. Talk about a shout said, out. She said great. whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. And then you have Genesis who said, go, Brian. Genesis does all of our social. And she, she helped. She helped me pay, uh, post mine today because I didn't oh, really very know. Good. She said, "We love Brown Sugar Bakery, Chicago. You have you have a lot of fans. Get out of here. You do. Yeah. They're, they're commenting uh. and liking each other's comments. All right. So, I my real estate office. We actually did our holiday party on your Mystic Blue, which was great. Oh yeah. Um, do you have any more space for boats, or is that kind of at capacity over there at Navy Pier? Well, uh, glad you asked. So the south side is, has kind of at capacity with, uh, with passenger vessels. <clears throat> we actually have a lease agreement right now with a developer to put a transient marina on the north side of the pier Very that cool. would allow other boaters from Chicago, Michigan, um, you know, Indiana, Wisconsin, to bring their own boats over and kind of tie up at the pier, stay at the hotel for a couple nights, go back up uh, to other locations. So... Hopefully that gets through. It's in the permitting process right now. Um, that sh I, I think that's a, a nice little game changer for us as well. I, I think that would be huge yeah. for people to just be able to take their boats, especially, come, I didn't even think about it, coming from a different state from Michigan over, stay at the yeah. hotel and just kind of leave their boat and then go back. The actual f er, initial request came from the Park District because of all the, the locals that really just go out you know, over by the other side of the water plant and just tie up to each other and they right. sit in the playpen over there. Right. They actually, they want something to do. So mm -hmm. if they want to stop over for lunch, stop over for dinner, stop over and stay overnight, um, once this transient marine is in, that's the spot to do it. I think where the river really mm -hmm. kind of made itself a great spot for boaters was when people were able to stop at the river walk and get out and just right. kind of tie up, which would be fantastic in Navy Pier. Correct. You'd save the hassle of having to go not that it's a terrible thing to go through the Chicago River, but going through the locks and everything in the river and and tie up and, and tying up, live music, do whatever. Yeah, that'd be very very cool. And you guys have Pier Tastic Tuesdays. I'll let you explain what that is. That's yeah, a new so thing you guys are it, launching. We just launched it. We're just we kind of using data now. So right, so we start looking at our data and we say, you know, Tuesdays during the summer happen to be our slowest days. What can we do to help generate some some activity, some more people to come down? And and how do we create opportunities for everybody in the city, even on low dollar values, right? So um, we met with all of our partner tenants, um, and we actually have a 90% uh, participation rate from all of those tenants have some type of discounted deal every Tuesday during the summer, and it's all day long. So it's not particular hours. Um, um, we gave uh, two for one. There's a lot of two for one deals. There's a lot of 25% off deals. 
everything from retail to theater to um, um, dinners. It, it's a great, great place for people to come on Tuesdays during the summer. That's great. And then <clears throat> Wednesdays and Saturdays, I'm guessing, are the kind of busiest days given the fireworks happening? Yeah, Saturday's always our busiest day. A lot of people off, and they'll come down for the day, stick around for the fireworks at night. Uh, Wednesday's another draw for the fireworks as well. Uh, Friday night, beer garden, live music back there. We're doing a lot of jazz series, blues series this year, movies in the park. All of those are free. I'll tell you, your fireworks, <clears throat> and I used to watch them for 11 years straight. I used to just actually walk walk my dog typically right when the fireworks were happening. Yep. Just sit out there and watch them. They're the best. They're almost as good of fireworks as the city does on the 4th of July. It's crazy that you guys do that twice a week, every week. And it's Memorial Day to Labor Day? Memorial Day to Labor Day every Wednesday, every Saturday. And we are the ones who do the city. Oh, so you do the yeah, cities as so well? on the 4th of July. Okay. So the 4th of July fireworks in the city of Chicago, our name, th those are our fireworks. So you guys just dial it up like a quarter percent, dial, it up, dial yeah. it up a little. Because Stay a little honestly, longer. Wednesdays <clears throat> and Saturdays, the fireworks are just about as good as the 4th of yeah. July fireworks. And it, I don't know if you ever noticed, but it is tied to music tracks. So yes. As you're, okay, so you didn't notice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm hoping people track. notice that because we actually the choreography of music to the explosions is supposed to supposed to work, and at least you noticed it. Yeah, I mean, I was there for 11 years, so I kind of yeah. had to. Yeah, right. um, but uh, I, I just always, and I think they progressively even got bigger and badder as time went on. I think at the beginning maybe they were shorter. By the time I went, I was like, it's like the Fourth of July twice a week, every week for three, four months. It's perfect for a first date, right? Yeah, perfect for a first date. Right? Perfect. How about Very romantic. Fire fireworks, good for a first date? Yeah, I agree. I think it's good for a first date. And you can see them from, I mean, they're, again, pretty big fireworks. Yeah. But for a, from a lot of the shoreline or the restaurants or buildings near the shore, you can see those fireworks. Absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, even the boats that, that yeah. leave from the pair, the dinner cruises, those are their best nights, right? Because you get to go out in the boat and you sure. can experience the fireworks from out in the lake. It's so just a different type of view. And, and your your job must be hectic. I mean, because you guys have so many, it's so many moving parts at Navy Pier and then so many events that go to Navy Pier. We've had a couple people on as past guests who've had festivals and stuff with you guys. Are you like morning to night just a little swamp from uh, scheduling and trying to fit things in in different spots? Yeah, that's what Pier? all this gray hair's from, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm really only 22 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you just did a touch of gray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but you know what, the, the nice thing is it's not mundane. You, yeah, it changes. It's not coming into an office, sitting in a chair all day, sitting in front of a computer and just running numbers. Um, most of the meetings I wanna hold is kind of on location. What's the issue? Let's go out there and let's address it, you know, on location instead of just sitting in an office, sitting in a, in a meeting and talking and looking in a piece of paper. It, it, it's, it's a great space because you you got a lot of different people coming different at, at different times and the diversity is just, phenomenal and you have uh, obviously a great team and they're very supportive you have uh quora murphy saying brian is the best love his wife oh, that's wife. my wife oh and you uh, have a high dad from tj <laughs> oh that's my son you have a uh, murphy machine in the house from chuck luna uh, oh yeah he's you have awesome. all the fans yeah he might have the most fans of anybody we've ever had oh, on the I show know, right? he's, he's rivaling paul connor well, i'll tell you what i mean <laughs> Cora probably just listened to the twins and, uh, you know, we're going to have to go on a date night tonight, honey, so I'll be home. I have it all planned out, and uh, I'm going to need some tips. Well, so I've been to a wedding. A good friend of mine, Johnny, who also was a past guest of the show, um, got married at Navy Pier. He might need advice on relationships because he's now since divorced, and I can make fun of him because he's my good buddy. But, but it has uh, nothing to do with has Navy, nothing to do with Navy yeah. Pier. It's a beautiful wedding. Skip. So if you're... <clears throat> your clients make it to a wedding, they can also have a wedding at Navy Pier, right? right? I think we can work out a little full package here. I think this, I think we have like a full from like yeah. first date all the way to all marriage way to package. Marriage. Exactly. Couple rides on and the sea dog. They just stay at the hotel for their honeymoon right after their wedding. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's actually probably going to be a great touch for the weddings that come in because right. that, I mean, there's a lot of hotels in Chicago people can stay at, but since you guys are an actual wedding venue, having a hotel there to yeah, share the space leave, would be great. You know, all of our events, we have ASICs this weekend, um, which are volleyball tournaments, and they mm -hmm. come from all over the Midwest. And even this weekend, because the hotel's not done, they have to stay at hotels downtown and then make their way over to a game at 8 a.m., and then they're not playing again at 2, and then they're playing again at 8, and then you're playing again the next day. How nice would it be for a parent just to kind of go upstairs, stay here, let your kids go, enjoy the pier, and then be back at the game at 
you know, at two. So we think it's a game changer with the, with the hotel. Absolutely. And I think it's obviously the views from Navy Pier are unmatched by anything else. There's only one building on that side of Lakeshore Drive, which is Lake Point Tower, and it's a building building. It's a yeah. condo building, yep. so you can't yep. stay there. So you would really have the probably the best vantage point of getting the whole skyline. Never be blocked, right? Never. Yeah. Unless a big, huge boat pull up in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of those that come into the playpen, but probably not big enough to yeah. block anything. It's not like Cabo. It was in Cabo not so long ago, and some guy pulled up in a boat that looked like it was a quarter billion dollars. He was parked out with the uh, cruise ships. And just sat. Mm -hmm. He just yep. sat there. Yep. I heard that was John's boat. Yeah, John's yeah. boat, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was just chartering it for the week <laughs> couple more years yeah. couple they more years. they Where actually said I? the prince uh one of the princes of D in dubai actually does that he takes his just giant mega yacht on a cruise around the world and then his the cabo harbor is a very big harbor if you've been there but his boat's too big so he has to he has to also park out with the cruise ships and then he takes a boat that bit that apparently Probably parks something. inside that boat mm -hmm. And that barely fits in the harbor. And then he takes oh that and he parks it in the harbor and then hangs out. <laughs> Must oh be nice. Goodness. Dreams. He has no problems finding dates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if they last, but he yeah. Yeah. They might be a different one like every yeah. week. Yeah, I think he's he has no issues finding dates. Yeah. Maybe for the right or wrong reasons, but who knows. Um, but that's awesome. It's, it's great to know because I love Navy Pier and it was – a place where I always thought of is when my aunts would come in town or you know family would come in town, it was right in front of my building, so I would go there constantly. I'd walk my dog past there, and it is dog friendly, right? You yes. just have to be leashed. Yes, you have to yep. be leashed. I yep. remember that my dog was always on a leash, but I remember dogs running no, around dog, leash. Dog friendly for sure. Yeah. Outside though, correct? Outside, yep. Very cool, and it's free. So for people who are coming in from out of town, it's free to access Navy Pier. You don't have to pay a fee because there's a lot of places you go out of town where you have to pay kind of a just a charge to just yep. to get in. Yep. It's completely free, um, and I'm glad to see that it's it's evolving so much and it's changing for the better. Because yep. originally, and I did a little bit of research. Come, I'm a history nut. Um, you guys were opened in like the 19 teens, right? Yeah, so 1916. 1916. And it wasn't called Navy Pier back then, right? Municipal Pier. See, he knows all of this. Yeah. I don't even have to quiz him. He's got it down. And for those of you watching, because, again, history buff here, um, was it World War II-ish when it turned into Navy Pier because the Navy was actually there? Yeah, they used it for a uh, you know practice. So they uh, actually converted two old passenger ships into landing decks so that they were uh, – and they practiced landing their planes in Lake Michigan – uh, and they were housed at, at Navy Pier. Oh, crazy. Cause I, <clears throat> so I'm from Northbrook, and then the Glen and Glenview um, used to be a naval base, too. It's mm, crazy yeah. when they shut that down. I know the air and water show used to kind of always take off from the Glen. Yeah. I didn't know they were actually landing planes at Navy Pier, too. Yeah, back then, because they were getting prepared to go to war, um, and, they, and they used Navy Pier as kind of their base for their practice. Very cool. Question for you, and this is a random question. Can a boat now pull up to Navy Pier at all to touch and go, or you can't? No. No. Not until this, uh, this thing happens. Marine is done. And when could that be? Hopefully next summer. Okay. Um, we think they're ready to go. They're just waiting on permit um, from the city, so hopefully they get that issued and we can get moving on it. Because very, I think it'd be cool. great for the boating community. Really for sure. Do. And just to, you know, there's going to be other elements to it, so we're hoping that, uh, you know, to use – Use it as an educational tool for um, some of the public schools that are out there. Bring some kids down. Tell them about Lake Michigan. Bring them out on Lake Michigan. Uh, you know, we try and do a lot of that educational uh, component with a lot of uh, even our <clears throat> even a lot of our tenants, Children's Museum and Shakespeare and all them all have these educational components. We actually bring a lot of kids down on field trips that will go out on boats or they'll go to a Shakespeare Theater or they'll go to CCM. Why not? Why not? give them a little more uh, access to the lake as well. Of course. Yeah, I. now that you mentioned it, used to see a lot of buses pull up and do field trips. I oh, used to walk that do. route literally at least five, six times a week. I'd walk my dog past Navy Pier, and there was always buses pulling up and yep. kids getting out there. Yep. So what is there for kids to do? So if a family comes by Navy Pier on a weekend outside of just being outdoors in the Children's Museum, what are some of the attractions there? So we've got a new fountain out front. Um, which gets a lot of play, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't even think people come photos. for that. Yeah, a lot of that. Um, so the kids will use that. Um, there's a lot. We do a lot on the new uh, Polk Brothers Park uh, performance lawn. So we got two different lawns over there and stages. So we'll have 
Uh, we'll do movie in the parks over there. Again, for another free opportunity. We do uh, jazz music uh, at nights during the week. We have uh, blues will be going out there as well. <clears throat> um, and then you got all the retail, all the restaurants. The nice thing for even young people like yourselves is grab and go. So you don't have to stay within as long as you're on Navy Pier, you can grab a drink and just kind of walk freely along the lakefront everywhere else. Oh, that's else. cool. That's cool. As opposed to everywhere else in the city, if you buy from this location, you got to finish Stay. it before you leave. So we've kind of got a different type of ordinance that as long as you're on the pier, you can grab and kind of walk and enjoy and sit out by the water, take a look at the views. Actually, I'm starting to like this for a first date spot. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys could figure this out. I don't know how to do that. You know, I've been married for 21 years, but... Tell us what needs to happen, and you guys draw it up, and we'll just figure out how to do it. Because, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to bring the question back here. And actually, Greece probably here. on there right now, and a, and a couple of Genesis, they're probably mm -hmm. all talking about it now, and they'll help with this idea. I'm actually, yeah. I'm going to bring it back to our love twins here. Perfect. Is, what's your kind of do's and don'ts on drinking and how much you should be drinking on a first date? You shouldn't have more than two drinks. More than two? Yep. Even if you have a really good time. And tolerance. a first date shouldn't be more than two hours. Really? Yes, otherwise you're leaving or you're getting rid of the mysterious factor so they don't they learn too much about you so they don't have to inquire again for a second date. Interesting. Some of my guy friends really love this advice. They're like, oh, two hour dates, we're in, <laughs> we're done. But I actually really love that idea of being able to just grab less than two drinks, kind of walking around being able to talk because you're active, and then watch the fireworks. So two hours, then it's just a dinner basically or just quick drinks and an activity mm -hmm. and then done. And then the second date can be as long as you want? Well, yeah, you can do something that's a little bit longer in terms of time frame. If you go to a sporting event, of course, it's going to be longer than two hours. You'd be like, shoot, it's overtime. Got to go, sweetie. <laughs> Hit the two-hour mark. It's like, I'm out. <laughs> Missed the end. Missed the end. But we always want to leave a little mystery, or you might sure. be history is what we say. So that's why. I love these lingos. And so like the first date is just like, you're meeting for the first time, so it's just like, do we like each other? Do we want to see each other again? And so, like, like I said, you don't want to kill the vibe. Okay, perfect. All right, so no more dates longer than two hours. You hear that, John? Yes. My well, next John, first date. Yeah, your next first date. Maggie's like, uh, nope. Yeah. John has the <laughs> coolest significant other ever, Maggie, yep, who is watching. Been. Shout out yep. to Maggie. Um, Shout out. She is the coolest. Did she you go is. on your? Where'd you go on your first date? <laughs> we went. You better remember. Uh, I just no, really no, put you I on do. the spot there. I do. Uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant that neither one of us thought, gee, we should make a reservation because uh, it was Cinco de Mayo. So <laughs> we walked well, great in great planning for your first yeah, date, John. It was bad. That took uh, more than two hours. So we walked in, realized that it was just jammed. But luck, lucky for us, right around the corner, there was an Irish pub who had a mariachi band and was doing tacos and uh, margaritas and such. And uh, it was about, yeah, it was about actually a two-hour date. Uh, we were both driving. Uh, we were out in the suburbs. We were both driving, so we didn't drink much. But, uh, yeah, we kind of went in with your guidelines without even knowing it. But the uh, rest is history, and we're eight years in. So yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bree said, martinis help the vibe stay alive. That's another rhymer. <laughs> I tend to agree. Way to go, Bree. Um, okay, I like that. That two, two drink maximum. And then is your recommendation follow up on another, if, if the two people like each other, follow up on a date quickly or let time go? Because I feel like that's the problem with social media and dating apps is if you're not quick to your second date, then the person's off dating You don't have else. to do a second date right away, like at least within the next week, within seven days, but you definitely follow up the next day and let them know you had a great time and try to continue a conversation with them until sure. you see them again. Because otherwise that's what happens is people wait too long without communicating and so then people get bored or lose interest. So communication is key in order for that consistency to continue to grow the connection. Don't leave people on red. <laughs> it happens. You should turn that off. Period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have I don't have the red thing on my phone at all. But yeah, yeah. no. Well, you listen. It is, I I do this all the time when I when I'm coaching and training people. I, I ask people to pull their phones out and say, Hey, listen. Um, you know, how many unread emails do you have? How many unread text messages? Because a lot of people un don't read their emails, but people do read text messages. Everybody reads their text messages. So even if you don't have the red thing on. Mm -hmm. 
if a day goes by, the person read your text message. For sure. Unless they're a, a lunatic. Yeah, for sure. Usually I think the average is like three seconds a text message is actually read. So if you know wow. someone's ignoring your text message, they probably have read it. Unless they're in like a business meeting or, yeah. you know, traveling on an airplane. But other than that, the average person typically would read your message. And, and gets so, a hint. Yeah, so if they're playing games, then you'll know. Yeah, so if they haven't responded to you in a couple hours, get the hint. Don't. Don't message them 40 times in a row. How about now? How about now? Yeah, How about my, now? How about my, now? Dating, <laughs> my dating advice to people. Um, and don't write a book because things can be misconstrued via text message very easily. Oh, God, yeah. What is, uh, what's the advice on texting versus picking up the phone and calling people? So it really depends on the two individuals' personal preference of communication style. So... It's something, it's a good question to ask the person you're communicating with and ask them if they prefer a text message or a phone call. But I think today a man should be masculine and actually give the woman a call, especially if he's really interested in her because it really takes it up the next notch and shows that he respects her and values her already. Okay, good advice. Can you break up via text? (laughs) That's a good question too. Ideally, you shouldn't. You should have a mature conversation about it face to face. Ideally, if not over the phone, will but a text message is not really the appropriate. It depends also how long you've been dating somebody. Because if you just go on a date with somebody like one or two dates and then you're not really feeling it, there's not really much of a connection developed yet. Then you can say, look, I'm not really feeling like we like vibe together. I'm not really feeling like we have chemistry if this is going to go anywhere, then it's fine. But if you've been dating somebody for a lengthy period of time, then you should respectively do it in person or, or at least have a phone call. You can now hybrid Brian via FaceTime. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, I guess you're Scary. right. Scary. Yeah. So it's like a text via in person yeah. phone yeah. call. <laughs> it's, I, I don't use the dating apps. Yeah at all really anymore um but uh when i uh <clears throat> went on my first couple dating app dates it was almost like the people were nothing like their profiles <laughs> so i learned to facetime before i went on a yeah. date i said i would facetime somebody to actually see if like the personality meshed before i like wasted my time i was like oh what a tool facetime now is because you can actually just sit there and talk to somebody for a few minutes right. and you can kind of react. And yeah, people might be nervous back and forth. I talk to hundreds of people every day, so my level of nervousness is low. So you can't judge somebody off of like one FaceTime, but at least you get a kind of feel for them right. a little bit. I think you'll know if you have any sort of like chemistry or interest in going on the date from a FaceTime. Yeah, so that's most dating recommendation Smart. is maybe try to FaceTime if you're gonna go on a dating app date. Yeah. Um, do you have any dating apps that you recommend? Because you said that you guys do recommend people to mm-hmm. get on dating apps. Are there any apps that you recommend more so than others for people? Uh, I think it varies for everyone because I know some of our clients have better luck with certain apps than they do others. But I would say the most popular ones are Bumble, Hinge, and Tinder still. Yeah, the three most popular. Mm-hmm. And does Match.com still exist? Yes, but it's a paid one, so I think a lot of people steer away from it because they prefer to use more of the free ones because you can get the job done anyways with using the free ones. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm intrigued by all of that. And uh, (laughs) we're getting tons of people watching. And uh, by the way, Genesis said in person in capital letters. Yeah. So I agree with her. I'm just, yeah. I, my kids are listening, so I wanted to hear from a uh, how many How many kids do you have? Three kids. Three kids? Yeah. What are the ages? 25, 20, and 18. 25, 20, and 18, okay. Boyfriend, girlfriends, relationships? You know what? Um, <clears throat> no, no, and yes. No, youngest, not, not my allowed. youngest is my daughter, <laughs> which is the hardest, right? Because I'm a dad and it's yeah. my daughter, but she found a really good guy. Okay, and, good. Uh, we love him, so, you know, it, it's working out so far. Awesome. <clears throat> if it good. doesn't, we'll just dangle them off of maybe <laughs> well, that's why I ankles. got the older brothers, right? That's <laughs> perfect. His older brothers good. will dangle them off the top of the hotel <laughs> at Navy Pier. Yeah, take them for a long extended ride on the Sea Dog. Uh, although, <laughs> off the bat. although he's Dropping bigger than both back. the brothers, so oh. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's not good. They're well, gonna hate. They're gonna hate hearing that. Now. Yeah, no, he's a great kid. <laughs> well, we, that's good. We like him. Good, good to hear. Um, and how do so? <clears throat> how do guys be, get referrals to be referred to you guys as clients as well? Does it have to come from a female? No, I mean, they can still reach out to us. Okay. On th- we have lots of guys that follow us on Instagram and stuff, whatnot. They can still reach out to us through Instagram or through our website, whatever they're comfortable with. Very cool. And I, I imagine the needs of guys. I, 
I guess there's a question I'll back up. Do you find that guys are a lot more reserved with um, kind of the impediments of what's getting them to dating than women are, where the women are probably just much more open? No, I hear it all. Really? <laughs> That's just they're an open book because they feel comfortable with you guys. Yes. Um, yeah, anything from the bedroom to, you know, out on a date to, yeah, no. Uh, TJ, TJ said, no, he's not, exclamation point. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> all right, he's like, taller. That's, he's that's taller. all. Taller. TJ yeah. said, no, he's not, exclamation yeah. point, exclamation <laughs> point. I have a little sister, too. I would be saying the same yeah. thing if I yeah. was TJ. Everybody's taller than me, TJ. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so my sister has a wife, and she's taller than me. So yep. everybody's taller than me. Although my sister's smaller than me. There you go. Uh, that's really funny. But you will dangle him off the back of the sea dog. Don't worry, TJ. <laughs> um, we are zipping past the hour here. We are. I do have. I was uh, going to ask you if you had any questions because yeah, John actually, reserves his questions usually. I try to. I don't want to just jump in. But um, as far as we're, we're in 2019 and there's a lot going on, but chivalry, A, is it dead? And B, is it still looked at as a good thing? by ladies when they're out on a date, somebody's holding a door for them, or just, you know, those things. What, what do you two think about chivalry? I think it's great. I do think it is a little bit dead these days because they're, because people, men think they have so, I'm not going to attack men, but in terms of men, they think they have so many options via like dating apps or whatever that they okay. have gotten a little bit lax on their approach really? in terms of being, um, yeah, in terms okay. of chivalry. Okay. Julia? Uh, well, and also I think there's some women who actually lower their standards and don't um, feel that they need those things from men, where mm. uh, what we teach women is to really keep their standards, you know, in a certain way, high value, so that they receive their respect. And I think the initial of like if a man's approaching them mm -hmm. it's a good sign that it's the man's leading because you never the you never want the woman to lead the man should always be leading because we do go I back agree. to traditional uh values and roles to a certain mm -hmm. extent especially in the beginning stages of dating now of course over sure. time once you've been married things sort of balance out give and take and you learn what works and what doesn't work for the relationship but in the beginning initial stages mm -hmm. i do think traditional roles are still you know something to Stand by. Okay. Just to follow up on that, uh, does age have anything to do with that? Like Maggie and I have been together for eight years. Every single time, I still open her door to the car. Uh, she's always ladies first, everything, all that stuff. Um, but my nieces, they're in their early 20s. They're in relationships, very nice guys. But I see some of their friends and such. And the guys don't open the car door or anything. But do younger ladies expect that? Or is it, is it kind of an age thing? I definitely think there's been a shift in terms of, I think it is an age thing. Okay. Um, but I think there's a shift in terms of how, like you were probably brought up that way, or maybe mm, you learn, it's much. whoever their role models are. Yeah. Um, so maybe you watched your father do it, or you watched, you know, an uncle do it, somebody, a male role model in your sure. family did that. So you watched and you learned, or your mother taught you. So mm -hmm. it's not being learned in the home, then more than likely it's not going to be applied in their actual life. So it's kind of up to the parents to teach their children to have these um, morals and values yeah. of how, yeah. you know, okay. we treat others. Okay. Uh, and just one more, and I'll, yeah. I'll let it get back. Um, as far as the people that come to you, what ballpark age-wise? What 20 to 40, 18 to 30, who do you deal with? Most of our clientele is like 30 to, I would say 50. 30 to 50? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That's they think they know everything at 22 and... Well, they're not ready to make the investment or right. see that they might need to adjust their approach. Yeah, mm, the true. Okay. I was going to say, John, when I've, the dates I've gone on, mm -hmm. any of the chivalry things you do, they mm -hmm. don't, at least the girls seem to say that they didn't expect any of that because mm -hmm. it just doesn't have, like, I will never let a girl, if she's having a drink at all, drive or pay for her own Uber. I'll Uber to pick her up mm -hmm. um, just because I think if you're having a drink, somebody might get affected by it more than somebody else would. Sure. I shouldn't drive and yeah. picking somebody up is one thing. Walking on the side of the car. Right. next to the car side right, right. little things like that they're like oh like 
people don't do that anymore. So I feel like it's not expected as much or it's just not done as much, mm. but I, I'm sure it's still like, although I had one girl one time tell me, this was years before, even before my last ex-girlfriend say, I can hold my own door. I don't need a guy to hold my door yeah, for me. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, okay, crazy. Yeah. And it's there like, are women who are like that. They're a little bit, I would say, um, more masculine energy. Masculine energy, or they want to, they want to be seen as very being very independent and can do for themselves. Um, Which I respect completely. I was just being nice and opening, nice. and I was just like, right. whoa, this is yeah. a little aggressive. But okay. also that mindset, you almost want to put on the side when you're on a date and yeah. you want to have your feminine energy come out as a woman but you can be your powerhouse in your career all you want yeah. and be in this independent woman and take care of yourself and show that you're a responsible adult but whenever I'm, you're in a man's present and he's actually willing to go out of his way and be respectful and be gentleman like then you want to allow him to do that because it's actually makes you the man want to actually pursue the woman more okay Good advice for the girls who get mad about guys holding doors open for them. Yeah. If you're listening and you That's do that. That's a one and done. Yeah. Um, All right, fine. Well, you must be a chivalrous guy because Cora said, yes, it's <laughs> still alive. It, it has to be. Well, I know there's two boys on there that must do it if they want to yeah. live in my home. Good. Uh, it, it, it's the way I was brought up as well. Yeah. I mean, this bald spot in the back of my head is for my dad cracking me in the head if I didn't hold a door <laughs> open for a lady or an adult. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and my boys are expected to do the same. And the, the one the one thing that my dad will get mad about because he does feel like chivalry is dying, and and that's one big thing uh, he's always had is is just the lack of thank you when that happens is a big thing for him, yeah. right? And and I start to see it as well. Even you know, even drive in, you let somebody in, and they just go, and there's no thank you wave, or there's no thank that. you when to hold the door open, or to, those little things are are do feel like they're you're, you're being unappreciative for something that I went out of my way to make sure that it sure. was good for you, right? Yeah. If I hold <clears throat> if I hold the door for somebody, a stranger especially, huh. and they just walk right past, yep. it's like, it makes me <coughs> you're welcome. Yep, that's exactly and what I'll he does. And I'll do it two, three times until they acknowledge. It's like, yeah. you know, come on. Well, you touched on appreciation in general. And I'll, that's There's a good roundtable topic. I feel like for me that was in the past too a big, big thing. Like if, if you can't appreciate even the smallest gestures, set aside the big ones. Some people do giant gestures and don't get appreciated for I feel like lack of appreciation if it's not there in a relationship it's that's it like I, it's eventually I, I gonna agree, crumble 100 yeah um do you guys find that that's a big problem in relationships that you guys are coaching lack of real uh, when there's a problem appreciation pops up a lot i don't i don't think that's a big issue no no i don't feel like it's a big issue at all in terms of mm -hmm. yeah some of my exes, see? Not everybody else is unappreciative. Well, there's a reason they're an ex. Yeah, that's right. Um, Genesis said, that's amazing, Brian. You have a lot of fans. I mean, I'm not even reading out all the comments. You're just full of fans on here. Yeah, I paid Pulled every up. one of them. You paid all of them. <laughs> like, you guys have to go on there and yeah. comment. Yeah. We got the Love Twins on. I got to compete with that today. Um, John, we zip through the hour here. We did. A lot um, of good positive information and energy. Yeah, this has been awesome. Um, for those of you listening, if um, you want relationship advice, if you're a female or a male because they take referrals, um, please check out Entwined Lifestyle. Please reach out to the Love Twins. I'm going to follow. I think I followed you guys earlier today on social media, but I'm going to follow you guys. I love everything you guys are doing. Uh, the, the taglines are catchy. Um, I think that what you guys are doing now, especially in this um, insane dating environment that's dating now, um, is definitely needed. Because I feel like both my guy and girlfriends um, are a little bit lost because it's a little bit of a cluster F out there now. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for what you guys are doing. Um, check out their uh, Fiercely Femme Tribe. Check out their Femme Masterclass. You guys have a bunch of online courses as well. Check all that stuff out because... Um, I think it's definitely going to um, help you guys uh, become better at dating. And yeah. the first call is always on us. So. Oh, first call is always on you guys. Yep. Perfect. Um, so call them. At least do a consultation. I'm sure if anything, they're going to improve or give you tips. They gave us some tips today, um, which I think are going to be extremely helpful for me and everybody else listening who's still dating. And Brian, thank you for coming on. Um, I'm a big fan of Navy Pier. Um, I'm going to probably have to follow you on LinkedIn now. And you said no Instagram or is there an Instagram? 
No Instagram? Not in my world. No. Not in your world. All right, I'm just going to have to get your number. Next time I'm at Navy Pier, I have yeah, to come by come and see you. Absolutely, come on by for lunch. Um, check out Navy Pier's um, fireworks Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. They're Peer-tastic Tuesdays. Um, pretty excited about that and to check that out. That's going to be really cool. Um, and the hotel going on. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And then yeah. the boats. You guys are doing boats. so much. Yeah. A lot going on. Yeah, a lot going on. So thank you for coming on. Um, love Navy Pier. If Again, if you're from Chicago and you haven't visited Navy Pier yet, go do it. You're crazy. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's the number one attraction. And if you're going to go on a first date, and you guys can maybe send some first go date for people. Yeah. Yeah. Go, for yeah. go for Tuesdays. Go for Tuesdays. Bring two dates? Is that what you said? <laughs> oh. <yeah. laughs> two day Taco Tuesdays at Pier Tastic <laughs> Navy Pier. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Well, they're only two hours trouble. each, so you got to go early and then come back for a night. Oh, oh yeah, good. you can do a double header. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually a good question. How how many people, if you are actually trying to find dates, like if you're trying to find somebody, is it respectful to date around the same time? Because like a lot of people, after a certain period of time, have an expectation that you're dating one person. But is it okay to be going on dates with multiple people? You can date as many people as you want until you have a conversation with that one person that makes you exclusive and committed to them. Okay, there's yeah. the answer. Makes sense. I like yeah. that. Sure. Um, but yes, take some of your first dates to Navy Pier. I love Navy Pier. It really is one of the greatest um, places in the city of Chicago to just be able to walk around. It doesn't cost anything to go there. Um, but definitely go in and obviously help out the vendors who are spending money to be vendors mm -hmm. at Navy yes. Pier. Please. Yep. Yep. Um, the IMAX is great. I completely forgot about that. I yeah. used to watch stuff there all the time. So there's mm -hmm. so much to do at Navy Pier. Um, excited to watch the evolution as it continues. Yeah. I think the hotel, like you said, is going to be a huge game changer. Yep. So thank you for coming on. And obviously, Thanks thank you for me. everything you guys do at, uh, at Navy Pier. John, what do we got for uh, next week? We have another great show. Thank goodness. Lined up. Uh, Deborah Sunderland. She's the founder and CEO of... Sunderland, executive coaching. She's a public speaker. Phenomenal lady. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And Kelly Johnson, they happen to be friends. I met Kelly first, and then she uh, introduced me to Deborah. Uh, Deborah. Uh, Kelly is the CEO of Ballast Group, which is a PR firm. She is also a public speaker coach. So there are people that have um, get a little nervous in front of large audiences and such and she works with people so they can articulate the story they want to tell awesome. uh, it's gonna be really really fun and uh yeah this today was great and thank you all so much for coming in thank and, you for uh, having us yeah thank, yeah, you. thank you for coming on and thank you for all the advice and brian congratulations got a lot of fans thank you appreciate it <laughs> um so that's it from us. Yeah, that's all we got for yeah, today. Yeah, we'll see you guys next uh, next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Boom. In 3, 2, 1, out.